Uh, as Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm Dr. Muhammad Sadil Yas, and I welcome you all to this uh, uh, Magic of Elizarov uh, webinar series. And this is our second session. And uh, it is on uh, limb deformity correction using a Taylor special frame. Uh, I'm really thankful to Dr. Maurizio Katani and Dr. Pili that uh, they have joined us uh, and they will be teaching us uh, how to correct the limb deformity using a Taylor special frame. Uh, I have, I'm also blessed and honored that uh, I have uh, Sir Amir with me as a chair of this session. Uh, Sir and uh, Dr. Yunus Sombro started Elizarov in Pakistan in early 1990s when uh, Sir went to St. Petersburg and uh, got his training and uh, introduced Elizarov in Pakistan. And uh, uh, I have uh, the panelists which I have with me is uh, Sir Naim uh, and uh, Sir Shahzad from Ghurti Hospital, Dr. Zamir Somro from Sin, and uh, uh, Dr. Harun and Dr. Awad will join us shortly as well. I would request uh, Sir Amir to uh, formally uh, welcome Dr. Maurizio Katani and Dr. Pili, and then we will start our session. Thank you, Thank you, sir. The great names in Elizarov after the great Russian Elizarov are Maurizio Catani from Italy, and Dror Peli from the USA. And from Pakistan, the pioneer was, may Allah bless his soul and give him Jannah, Yunus Sumru. And I closely followed him in the north of the country with Elizarov introduction here. In Pakistan, Maurizio and Pili who have been here, you must have seen the totally chaotic traffic that we have. So in Pakistan, we cannot practice orthopedic surgery without mastering the technique of especially of poor standard of fixations leading to infections, neglected trauma, deformity, a leader off is a must. And one step ahead, the Taylor spatial frame, especially for rich countries in, in Europe and North America, it's very limiting for us in Pakistan. It's too expensive. And we can get by by doing a laser off as per laid down standards. Maurizio has made our life much easier. When I learned it from the Russians, they would put wires all around. Maurizio introduced a chance and wire combination, and that is a brilliant addition to this technique. Thank you very much, Maurizio. And as soon as this COVID thing is out, I must tell you here, Maurizio and Pili, we did not take a single day off in our hospital because of this. I call it the pandemic. And we have done about six and a half thousand major operations since the lockdown in March. And it's doing very well. But once this is over, we would love to have you two back in the hall, and we would like to have hands-on demonstrations. And it's always a pleasure to hear you teach us. So welcome to the webinar, and thank you very much once again. And I'm grateful to all the panelists in Pakistan who have taken their time out and are sharing their knowledge with the participants of this course. So welcome. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed, sir. I think, uh, Dr. Pili, you'll uh, yes, start I with your start demonstration because first. Otherwise, the, the slide will take off. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. The, so the, the mic is with you. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Amir. And uh, basically, this is a basic uh, uh, speech on uh, Taylor Special Frame uh, Deformity Correction. Uh, I don't know if everybody knows the Taylor Special Frame. It's basically, it's an Elizaro frame with some uh, um, different features. It's, uh, but the basics are the same. And I will try and, and explain that the basics are the same. So if we know the basic of an Elizaro frame and the deformity correction with the Elizaro frame, we can use the Taylor Special Frame in the same way. So it's been uh, developed uh, using the, the Grow Steward platform, which is a, it's basically a platform on six struts and uh, it's an hexapod strut, which is able to move in all directions, um, 
uh, in the in the three planes. So it's perfect uh, system to correct deformities as we can correct each deformity in each plane, like varus valgus, uh, procurvatus recurvatum, and, and uh, lengthening and shortening, and also in uh, um, rotational deformities. It was de developed first uh, for use in, uh, um, in in the in the tire um, um, industry to develop uh, uh, the different ways of uh, of the tires to uh, will contact the, the uh, with the floor, and so it, it has, it, from there has developed uh, from different di different uses, uh, like uh, in the aerospace uh, space uh, industry for uh, um, using this as a platform for. Uh, um, um, for uh, flight uh, simulators. So, to use the stereospatial frame, you need you need a, a frame, you need a computer with a um, connection to the internet, and uh, you see the technology is basically um, uh, some. Uh, you need some elements that you will need to you to uh, to know per, to start the, um, your uh, correction. Um, you so you need the, all, all these uh, parameters like frame parameters, mounting parameters, deformity parameters, and then the frame will do uh, uh, together with the program uh, you developed will uh, um, correct the deformity you um, you decided to to, to correct. Uh, the basic elements are the struts, which are of different sizes, and the rings, which can be full rings or three quarter rings. And this is uh, a pre-assembled frame. So, so what do, need, do we need to know to use a telospatial frame? Basically, um, basic, basic of mechanical axis. So all the basics of how is uh, the axis of the femur and, and tibia and uh, how to do a deformity correction. This is the same uh, we need to know for correcting the same kind of uh, um, deformities with a simple eraser of. So you need to know all these pages. What else do we need to know to be able to use a TSF to correct deformities? We need to use, to be able to understand the concept of using a hinge and where to place your hinges. So it's the same, a hinge in the, it's a virtual hinge in the, in the TSF, like we put the hinge in this position, for example, and we can correct this deformity. So it's, um, the concept is the same, but using a different technology. Uh, for example, if you want to correct a simple deformity uh, like this, you know your hinge has to be placed along this uh, bisector. And same, uh, you, you will need to know when uh, using a, a TSF uh, to correct the same deformity. So what else do you need? Uh, do we, we need to know the tactics we are uh, going to use? If an acute correction, progressive correction, or progressive correction plus lengthening. And this is the basic of uh, whatever correction we release our frame. So it's the same again. And uh, then uh, how to, to perform the correction, where to perform the correction, how to do our um, uh, uh, our osteotomy and how to apply the, the, the frame. Like for an acute correction, we can use this system or we can use a TSF as well. It's going to be the a similar, a similar system. But um, uh, So again, we have a similar concept. So if we put the hinge in there, uh, you know you're going to get this kind of correction. And uh, you can do it with a lengthening and progressive lengthening. And you can do this with a TSF or with a laser frame, but the concept is going to be the same. Just different appliance of the same uh, rules. Uh, simple uh, correction again with an laser frame and all these kind of correction you can do with a TSF, just applying the same rules. Okay, this is the deformity with a, with a classic laser of, uh, with your hinges in that position, and you can do the same with a, with a um, TSF frame. And Professor Castagni later on will explain you how to do the program and how to place your hinge in the right position um, with the virtual hinge. Uh, we still use the, the assembly frame and then uh, hinge. Also, Malunio with angular deformity, you can treat this with, a, with the same uh, DSF, doing a lengthening and correction uh, um, technique. Same, uh, you can do this kind of deformities. And uh, for, to do this kind of deformity, you can ap apply different, uh, same concepts um, and use the TSF. 
okay like in this room in this kind of uh, deformity you can uh, you can use the tsf to correct them uh, applying uh, the same rules so the concept is this is basically the same uh, concept uh, used for elisa of uh, um, for correcting deformities applied with this system okay instead of we can use when you use a, a yuxta uh, articular hinge you can do this with the tsf as well as uh, it, um, all this application can be replied uh, and applied on the tsf uh, frame so also um, doing deformities uh, which are very high uh, up to the joint level you can use a tsf uh, and apply the same rules because you can put your hinge very high, like in this, in this case with the, with the normal lizard, the hinge was there. But if you imagine you have a TSF the same, you can use the same concept, apply the, the hinge, the virtual hinge in the same position, and in this way, correct this with the TSF. Okay, I have, uh, obtaining this uh, uh, mechanical, perfect mechanical axis uh, correction. Okay. And these are all cases done with a normal uh, um, lizard frame, and same you can uh, you can you can use the same kind of uh, uh, apparatus with a with a TSF frame to correct this uh, in this in this area. Okay, the, the, the flight is taking off, so I leave the word to Professor Catania and he will keep on uh, with the, uh, with the uh, presentation. Sorry about this, but I have this flight to take. Take care. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Pili. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Dr. Maurizio, can you hear us? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Dr. Pili was leaving to yes. Sardinia Island with the airplane. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's nice. Okay. Um, so over to you. Can I, can I, can I do? Okay. Do you see this? Yes, yes, we can see it fine. Thank it's you. okay. Yes. Okay. Now, in a uh, few minutes, I, I would like to show you to match the TSF for any exapod because the cost is very high, but really um, we can use some time, many times. We reuse the frame. Unfortunately, you don't need to tell this to the factories because they want to use only one frame every patient. And so the cost is so high that you cannot imagine. But anyway, uh, I use the, the TSF since uh, 2000, despite uh, the TSF was introduced by Charlie Taylor in 1960. Anyway, I want to show how to apply. Somebody, uh, Billy, Billy. Grazie, thank you, because I, I hearing your airplane. So the basic frame, TSF, is two rings in six different roads, six different strut the, with the, the different length. And the, the basic construct we use to pre-assemble it before to apply. So you can prepare the frame with the deformity that you consider to correct. You can see the pre-assembled frame, six strut and one ring, uh, no complete ring because maybe this is in the tibia. When you apply this is in the tibia proximal, you can allow to movement, to move the knee. And the distal ring, you can apply full ring. What is important for the, for the TSF? Uh, you have only a little trick. The first, you have to decide which uh, ring is the main ring. And usually in the tibia, the main ring, the principal, the origin ring is the proximal. And you have to apply the proximal ring exactly perpendicular to the proximal segment of the tibia, if you do correction. Okay, or for fracture, any 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 case. So 
there is a little trick with this uh, hinge you insert just one half pin and moving around this hinge, you can centralize perfectly parallel, perpendicular to the proximal fragment. This is a basically, if you do this, everything becomes easy. And so you see the ring, you can move the ring, lateral, medial rotation until it's perfectly like this. You can use, you can use the imaging intensifier, but, but uh, is a so, uh, is not, is not always necessary because every orthopedics is able to insert one ring perpendicular to the proximal fragment of the tibia because it's easy to do it. And we use one pin proximal, you see centralized, and after you apply one wire or another pin in a, in a distal ring. And what is important that is not absolutely necessary that this ring have to be perpendicular to the distal fragment, okay? Is not mandatory. If you apply perpendicular, it's better for aesthetic, but it's not absolutely necessary. So you apply maybe one wire on one half pin, and at this moment you lock, you lock your strut, and the frame is centralized exactly as you want. Okay, at this moment you don't need to do nothing else than apply half pin how many you want. For the, in this example, you see the tibia with a three pin proximal and three pin distal because we needed to correct maybe one deformity in the medial side. Okay, now I show you, I cut the tibia in this place. And this is, could be one fracture, okay, or one non-union. And so how you can correct? How you can how you can manage the correction. The first time you have to take the X-ray in a simple way, perpendicular at the proximal ring, okay, and lateral to the proximal ring, exactly perpendicular, lateral and frontal. At this moment, okay, you you watch well the deformity like this. And so this is a proximal proximal. Uh, ring and the distal ring. You have to, to check two point. One, the red one, this point, we consider the origin. Origin because the proximal ring is the origin of correction, is a basically everything is rotating around the proximal ring. So you, you look for one point origin and another point, corresponding point. What is the corresponding? The corresponding is one point that at the end of correction had to be at the same point of the origin. It, is it clear this concept? This point have to go exactly in this point. So you call origin and corresponding. When you open, when you open, when you open your program, what you see, you see something, the name, you have to put the name of the patient. You can put uh, the notes. What is this? The, in this case is a simulation for conference, uh, but you can say fracture of the tibia. You can say the non-union of the tibia. And in this side, in the bottom, you, there, is a po there is a total residual or chronic. You have to choose total residual. Chronic doesn't exist anymore. Any, anybody, nobody use this kind of correction. It's more com complex. Now everybody use this total residual. And you see in the, in the rendering of, of, the, of the, the school, the, skele the skeleton, you can in, uh, uh, make you can choose the segment and the level of the segment. Okay, you can move up and down and you can move right or left. This is the first page. So the first page, patient name, kind of bone, long bone or foot and side. It's very important to, to be sure that you, when you correct the right, you correct the right. Because sometimes 
one of the simple mistake is to make uh, wrong side, okay? And after you go ahead and you go in the second page. The second page is the second page is a reference fragment, as I told you, and the bone deformity. Angulation, AP, lateral, translation, and every deformity. So the parameter of the deformity of the bone, you can measure. And so in this case, we have in AP view of the X-ray, five degrees of bulk. In the lateral, we have a 23 degrees of up of procurvatum apex anterior. We don't have a rotation. And we have a translation, five millimeter lateral, lateral translation, 20 millimeter posterior and 28 millimeter long axial translation, axial translation. How you measure? This is a frontal X-ray. And so you draw the line, the center line, the axis of the proximal fragment and the axis of the, of the distal fragment. At this angle, this angle is your AP view angulation, okay? With the X-ray. After we go to the lateral axis of the segment, proximal axis of the segment distal. At this angle is the deformity in a lateral view. In this case, it's a 23 degrees apex anterior, we call procurvatum. And after translation, translation means the distance between the origin and the corresponding, this is a frontal plane, okay? And so the distance is drawing one line, one line parallel to the proximal ring. The distance is not from this point to this point, is from this line to that line. Do you understand? Okay, it's clear, it's clear. Sad. It's clear this. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, the translation no, is clear. If you, have any doubt, if you have any doubt, tell me, because sometimes when you say uh, translation, some people is measuring from this point to that point is much more than this. So you understand? Okay. And after lateral view, we see the translation in a lateral side, the same, same rule, distance between origin and corresponding with a line that is parallel, that you measure parallel to, to, the, to, the, to the proximal ring. And so one line, one line par perpendicular, and this is a distance, is a translation of the in a lateral side. Axial distance is the same. One line through the reference, one line to the corresponding parallel to the proximal ring. Always the proximal ring have to be the basic reference. And you measure this. This is a, is a distance between reference and correspondence. In this case, is the, the frame, the, the deformity is too long. You have a 28 millimeter long because the bone, the distance is is um, 28. Okay, so in the page you can see that we apply all the measure five degrees of valgus deformity. You see well this. You see well. Maybe I can do. Okay, I can do better. Five degrees of valgus translation in the frontal plane you have a translation lateral 15 millimeter lateral you have a 23 angular deformity and 20 degrees and 20 millimeter of posterior translation and 28 millimeter of length and you can see that when you apply this measure the program give you a rendering of of the uh, of your can I can I ask you a, can I ask you a question over here? Yep. See, uh, the, 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 the third component, which is the axial view, uh, what is it, and how do you uh, measure angulation on an X-ray? Sorry, repeat it. 
there are three comp three boxes over here one is ap view the other is lateral view and the third one is axial view this this ap view you can measure yes. ap view is a five degrees yes. of algo a 15 millimeter of translation do you remember 15 millimeter of translation yes 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 definitely okay 15 millimeter of translation and the angular definitely. is is in the frontal plane is a five degrees of valgus. You can see? Okay. Yes, okay. definitely. And so you you apply all the measure in this in this in this program. How do you measure angulation? That was my, my question. Angulation. Angulation in the X-ray. This yes. is a frontal X-ray. This is axis of the of the proximal fragment. This is the axis. Uh, of uh, what, uh, rotation. I meant to say rotation, internal or external oh. rotation. The, the company. Uh, How would rotation, you feel it? A rotation. You cannot measure rotation by the X-ray. Never. So it's clinically. You will clinically judge Not the rotation. Clinical. Uh, as well, when you have a deformity in the femur, deformity in the tibia. Uh, my opinion is that you, if you take the CT scan. To measure rotation, always you make a mistake because okay. rotation is a clinically. Because sometimes okay. when you treat fracture or when you treat congenital deformity, you have a rotation in the foot, you have rotation of the knee because the knee is not normal. And so you have to watch carefully clinically. Okay. So you okay. measure. Usually I correct the rotation only at the end of the correction. First, I okay. try to correct the axis, okay? In the final, you watch carefully rotation of the foot in the tibia, and you measure, you can apply later in this point, okay. rotation. You can okay, make a second, second program. It's is easy to make a second program. This is the advantage. And the page three, you can see the ring characteristic, complete or two-thirds, in the kind of strut and the frame parameter, um, the diameter of the ring, the proximal distal, and the kind of strut. In this case, all strut are medium. Okay, and so ring, two third ring, one fifty five, and what is this? Open, open by four and five means that two. To understand well the position of the ring, you have to tell to the program, look at this, that the proximal ring here, you can see the proximal ring, you measure the strut, you have number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. And so you know that the proximal ring is open between four and five you understand yes I understand and so you can you can tell because you can as well to do rotation if you want but this is simple what is it absolutely important now you know, you go to the page four you gave to the program the deformity of the bone you gave to the program the kind of frame that you apply. But now you have to tell to the program what is the position of the frame respect to the bone. You have to measure the distance between frame and bone. And so if you watch in the in the page, you you can watch, you can see that you have this proximal ring. Okay, you understand proximal ring? Yes. So this is the axis of the proximal ring. And this is a distance between the origin to the axis. And this is a AP view offset means that the origin is 15 millimeter lateral to the center of the ring. You understand? Do you have a problem? Okay. Okay. In a, so you, you, in added, a, you added this uh, thread, threaded rod for uh, in per, uh, for this purpose there so that you know the center. This, this rod, this rod, you apply this okay. rod in the center of the ring. 
And so in the X-ray, you can see the rod. This rod is a simple Elizar of uh, rod. You can measure between this point to the origin. And so you understand that this frame is exactly 50 millimeter away in the lateral side respect to the origin, okay? And the same in a lateral. In a lateral view, we have this rod is exactly in the middle of the ring. You see a two rod, there's one overlapping the other. And so you understand that X-ray is perfect. You draw the line and you measure the distance between this line to the reference. And this is a posterior offset. Means that this proximal ring is a post the center is posterior to the origin 25 millimeter. At the same, now the distance you measure from the proximal ring to the reference. And this is a distance, the offset of the frame respect and the origin means that the origin is 18 millimeter distal to the, to the ring. Means that the ring is 18 millimeter proximal to the origin. Always you consider the ring and the origin, okay? And this is a, a, is a position rendering. You can see that now you apply this parameter, 15 millimeter lateral, 45 millimeter posterior to origin, 80 millimeter proximal to the origin. And you can see the drawing is perfectly the same that your X-ray. At the page four, you, had, you needed to apply the length Hello? Doctor, uh, uh, I'm online. Doctor, what is he offline? Okay? Sir, uh, he's online, but unka, I think net problem is that he's going to disconnect. Ho I'm going to leave. He has left now. I think he'll rejoin. Just in a minute. Okay. I'm going to re-add him now, as he joins. आदिम इसको मोरिजियो से कहें कि ये हमें ये डोनेट भी करें <laughs> सर अभी एंड में एंड में कहते हैं <laughs> मैंने कहा हम आपको एक कर देंगे डोनेट सर गुरकी को तेरे पास है ये सर <laughs> जी 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 सर जी Sir, we have a sign and we have a doctor who has a donation. So, we have a lot of people who 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 have a lot Yes, yes doctor, uh, we can help you find, sir. Okay. Uh, doctor Maurizio, can you hear I us? See, I don't see you. Uh, I don't see. Yes, yes. Uh, 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 I think there was something wrong with your connection. Uh, we can hear you fine now. Yes, uh, we can hear you. No, okay, now, but I don't see you well. No, I hear you, but I don't see you. Uh, uh, I don't know what happened. The connection is no good. 
Uh, we can see you now. Uh, we need to share your screen now. मेरे ख्याल है उनका साल ऑडियो जो है ना उसका को गड़बड़ा रही है कैन यू हियर अस डॉक्टर मोरिजियो नहीं सी बट आई डोंट सी यू एनी मोर आई डोंट सी यू एनी मोर uh maybe uh, have you connect have you uh, shared your screen with us uh, let me see i i can see you but uh, i cannot see the screen that the, you were you were sharing the with us not, uh, fantastic has not been shared yet fantastic i don't know what to do i don't know so you I so don't. you just have yeah. to click on share screen the green button at bottom of your laptop screen no oh, yeah. share share you share the screen i cannot i cannot get back i cannot get back sir sir aapne unko host banaya hua hai ji ji sir he is co-host sir sir unki screen waise stop ho chuki hai Doctor Marie, so uh, at top of your laptop screen, uh, there will be a button of stop share. Listen, you can continue. So I try to connect again. Okay, ha. Huh? Maybe you you okay. should uh, try to reconnect. Doctor Marie, so just minimize your PowerPoint. Just minimize your PowerPoint and open the Zoom window. Yeah, I try. I'm try to do. Until Maybe you can uh, make it switch. You can uh, switch it off and then uh, turn turn back again. That will solve the problem, I think. Okay. Now I see you. You see me? Yes, yes. I, I can see you well. Yes, sir. Well, I can continue. Sir. Okay. Well. That's great. Okay. Now we can see you. Okay. Well. So when you when you finish with the with the you hear me? Eh? when you finish yes. with the, with the, this application you can see i cannot see the screen i cannot see the screen can you please share your screen no why now yes yes now now it's fine now it's working now it's fine now it's fine okay well sorry sorry for me yes yes when yes. you finish <laughs> when you finish the in the last page the program give you a list of movement you can see here i, I try to open them. okay now is better and so you say to the program when you have to start with a correction usually one day 10 days depending what you what you do if you do osteotomy you wait 15 days it's a fracture you can do you can start immediately correction and every day every day you can see Uh, the 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 changement of the length of the road you see the road number 1 is going from 2000 uh, to 1164 and so and so it is a program that the patient can apply and when you finish with the program you arrive at the final correction you understand you can yes. tell to the program yes, yes. how many days how many days here you want to correct <clears throat> the program said you can correct in one day because when you do shortening you can do immediately but i decide to do 15 days and so i decide to do 15 days and this is a program for 15 days and you are get a correction now i understand it is a little bit difficult with the distance to understand but i want to show two cases just to see the difference between the original elizarov and the tsf this is a case of malunion mild varus shortening 3.5 cm and you see deformity in recurvatum okay 
as in Elizaro system, you have to watch what is the point exactly the so-called Cora, center of deformity, angulation, correction, and so on, the center of the deformity. In this case, you draw the line, you, you look for this point, okay? But it's not so important where you do the osteotomy, okay? It's important when you apply hinges. In this case, why don't I don't apply hinges in the in this position? I don't do the osteotomy in this side. I do the osteotomy more proximal because in this side the bone is not good. Okay, you understand the, the concept? And definitely, I do the osteotomy here. I apply hinges exactly in the perpendicular plane of the deformity, as well in the lateral side. I apply in in, his, in the center of the deformity. But I do the osteotomy in different side. You can see the center of the deformity, center of hinges, frame on, this is a lateral appearance, and you do correction. Okay, this original Ilzaro, easy to do, but is sometimes become a little difficult to understand exactly the plane where you apply hinges. And there is a rule, but sometimes it's difficult. But anyway, as well with the Lizarro, you can correct perfectly. Another case, almost the same, Verus and Recurvatum. It's not the same, it's another case, another patient. In this case, we decide to apply TSF. And so you see that we decide where is the where is the point of the correction of the deformity. It is a, a program done by the machine. The computer gives you the program. And so you don't need to apply any hinges. Just you say to the program, I want to do correction in this point. You see what is my pointer? And proximal in, in, in a frontal plane and lateral plane. I do progressive correction, and you can see that automatically the frame move in correction and a little translation because the hinges are not exact in the point of the uh, the point of the of the, um, the deformity. So you do the osteotomy in another side, but you get the same correction and realignment. You understand? There is any. Any question about this? You see the difference between hinges, very complicated, and these uh, virtual hinges. So you, you tell to the program, I want to correct, and the point of the deformity, the point of the deformity is here, here. And the program give you one program, one, one movement with the translation correction. So it's more easy than with Elizabeth. You know this guy? Who is this guy? It's me, uh, Zamir. Dr. Zamir. Zamir, yeah. do you remember you? <laughs> with Elizabeth, with Leco? Yes, yes. Okay, do you have any question about this? Thank you, not, sir. Not about Zamir. Eh? Do you have any question about the application of the, <laughs> of the frame? Uh, my, my question is when uh, you apply an Elizarov, you don't just okay. apply two rings. But when you're applying a Taylor Special frame, you're, you're ah. just using two rings. So is the construct no, as stable me. as before? Uh, uh, reg regarding the stability, I don't care how many rings I apply. If you have a long segment like this, okay, you see the long segment. In this case, yeah. you can apply or only one ring here, or in this case, I apply another ring more proximal to have a more stability. You understand? So okay, what okay, is okay. important is the reference ring and the distal ring. And after you can apply another ring in the medium, another ring proximal, but all the measures are done between the proximal and distal ring. But you have seen that I have Two rings. You added a ring. Okay. One is a TSF, and the other one is another ring just to have a more stability because this segment is very long. And so, of course, okay. you can apply the long, long uh, support uh, Q 
cube uh, and so and so. But sometimes I prefer to have a more stability. When you finish with a correction, you can remove this if you want, but I usually leave it until the, fi and the final. In the, in the original Elizarov, of course, we applied one ring, two ring, and one distal. One distal because there is not so much room to apply two, but if you want to apply two, you can do it anyway. It is what is important always that you have, you needed to have a stability because when uh, we start with the Lizarov original, you remember with the wire, you did it. And the frame was stable, but not so much. And so when you do correction, one case like this with just only wire, at the end you achieve correction of the frame, but not in the bone because there is a, some elasticity, some instability between ring and bone because the wire are elastic. Okay, this is the reason why I use always, almost always half pin. You see, in this case, I have a one wire for the fibula remaining is a half pin. You don't see many wire. How many wire? One here. Two. Two wires. Carefully, after 20, 30 days of the application of the Lizarov with only wire, become loose. There is no way. Or you apply many wire. Every ring, minimum three wire. And you know what I do sometimes when I do the foot? Is it just a, a news? It's not so news. For the foot correction, I don't apply anymore 1.8 wire. I use two millimeter wire. And with a two millimeter wire, you don't need some time as well to do tension. Just to apply two millimeter wire, three wire in, in one ring is absolutely more stable. But for better stability, I prefer the half pin. I don't know what kind of half pin. You see that my half pin are conical. Conical Ooh. and titanium, very, very stable. And sometimes in the proximal side, I use hydroxyapatitis to have a more stability. Other question, Sad? Um, me because... When uh, is the uh, strut uh, construct uh, stable enough? Can you uh, allow your patient to fully weight bear during the course of uh, correction? Uh, okay, good question. What is the lack of stability in TSF? Is this point here? Here? Yes. Look at this. This point here and this point here, they have about uh, half or one millimeter of movement. If you, if you don't have distraction or compression, this is a little bit moving, okay? Different than, than the orthofix. Orthofix hexapod is much more stable because they have a, a little ball here. It's much stable. But you have to consider that when you do correction of the deformity and you compress, the, this movement disappear. okay? You can apply in this frame, in this frame, you can apply one force of two, 300 kilos or more, because is absolutely six strut are very stable in the loading. But there is a, a little, a little movement, the half millimeter up, half millimeter down. And so when a patient is walking, sometimes feel a little bit click, click, click. But really, I never seen problem about this. Other question? Yes. Okay, that's fine. So you use this uh, Taylor special frame for uh, feet uh, correction, club feet correction as well? No, never. <laughs> no. Uh, for limb I have seen, I have seen some of my friends doing correction of the foot with the TSF. It's absolutely stupid because the correction of the foot have to be dynamic and watching every week how it, what is happening because if you do with the hinges, not always you can get correction. Usually I prefer the original Lizarro for the foot correction and I apply proximal foot, distal foot and 
strut and the bar to pushing and pulling. And so you have to check progressively what is happening. With the TSF, I never seen good result for correction of foot. Okay, maybe you can use it just for stabilize the foot, but it's, in my opinion, is enough. If you want to apply something to stabilize the foot, is enough to have pin in the calcaneum and you have a foot, a foot stable. Okay? okay, but when you have a complex deformity of the foot, usually the foot is complex deformity, four foot and high foot. And so you cannot do one, one arch stable. Okay. You have to apply frame of the four foot and frame of the high foot and correct differently. And sometimes you have to correct between the posterior foot and anterior foot. So you can distract the foot. You cannot do it with the, with the, with the ring in the foot. I never use, I try to use, and really believe me, it's about uh, 20, 20 years that I use TSF. And my experience with the foot is much, much better with the original zero. And uh, when you... Uh... Uh, when you uh, when you reuse your assembly, do you only reuse the rings or you reuse the struts as well? When you when you uh, reuse, you said that you reuse most yes, of, of your course. assembly. So do you uh, reuse. just reuse the rings or you, do you reuse the struts as well? <laughs> I cannot tell you. It's a secret. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes. <laughs> I, I, was, I was hoping, I, I thought that it's an open secret, experience. that's why I asked it. In my experience, I apply, <clears throat> now in this, in this moment, I don't do any surgery because it's the one week that I cannot do surgery in my hospital because of the stupid, uh, uh, stupid um, epidemia, una cagata that I don't understand the, the, the wall and become crazy. But anyway, I used to do three, four TSF, per week, okay? okay? And I have many. And how, may, how many pieces I change, usually I can tell you that I buy uh, 10 strut or less per month. Because sometimes the strut, you cannot read the number because the patient is, uh, is destroying the number. But really the strut is very, very stable. I never seen one strut broken in my life. Okay, okay, okay. But okay. basically, I understand this problem. The problem is the factory tells, tells you that you have to apply only once, right? Okay. okay. But the factory tells you that you can, see if you apply once and the, and the frame broken, they pay. If you apply twice and the frame broken, they don't pay. But anyway, in my experience, I never seen one ring, one strut broken. Never. Okay. But anyway, this is, this is, a, is a, in another problem. Eh? You understand? Other problem. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Well, I don't know. You, you reuse your ring for Elizarov or not? We, we reuse our rings. Okay. These are stainless not, steel rings. Not the TSF, the same. Yes. In Italy, one TSF, the cost is about four thousand dollars. You okay. understand? Okay. And, and how much does I mean? How much does a Elizarov cost? And the Elizarov is almost the same, um, a little bit less, but is a two two hundred two hundred uh, five hundred every full ring. And so, okay, the is cost a, is about the same. The, the, I can tell you this about uh, the Elizarov original is. Uh, 30% less, but we reuse. You, did you have any ring broken? Actually, uh, well, for initially we used the uh, aluminum made rings. We had a problem of broken rings, oh. but now we have switched to uh, stainless steel. And I agree now with you. Now we have switched because to stainless steel and now we don't have broken rings. I've seen, I have one factor in Italy that I'm making the ring with aluminum. And you know, I have seen two cases of the connection. The aluminum is a little bit little in this moment. And so I've seen breakage. But with the stainless steel and carbon fiber, I never seen one ring broken. I never seen one piece of the Lizarro broken. The, um, 
post support, oblique support, never, 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 never. And we publish one in early 90 or, or early, early 90, we publish um, the, on techniques in orthopedics, reuse of the Lizarro frame. You can find it in the literature. In, uh, we did it with the Kummel, uh, with the Frankel um, in, in New York. And so the final is that you can reuse. There is no reason to throw away. There is no reason. Okay, okay. we don't use. If you, listen, little story. I start to do orthopedics in 70, around 71. And we use the plate, plate for fracture of the tibia. Okay. And so okay. the plate was very costly and sometimes difficult to get because in Italy it was only one factor. The synthesis was distributing in Genova. And sometimes we reuse as well the plate, don't tell anybody. <laughs> when the plate okay. is straight, Okay, it's, it's an open secret. Because, not really, <laughs> because you say, but you you leave the plate in the body and, and there is a corruption. And absolutely no, because the stain is still is absolutely doesn't become rusty. And the in this rigidity is the same. And so we, we used to use as well the half pin because the cost early 70. Now, of course, the half pin we throw away. We throw away the bolt, the rod, because the, it's not the frame. I believe that we have to change something in a, in a, in a trading. Um, instead of that the factory have to rent the frame. You understand what that means? You buy one frame, you okay. do an application. When you finish, you, you give back, and they remake and give you back for 500, 1,000. Because in Italy, when I do one surgery in a public service, one surgery with the TSF, I get from the, from the government, I get $3,500 or euro. And the frame is costly much more. So what you do? Okay. I don't know, I don't know in Pakistan. Anyway, other okay. question, no question. Uh, are there any questions from the audience? If, <laughs> if anyone wants to ask a question, hey, you're more, more than welcome to entertain them. Okay, very well. Now I have to go away because I have in my office, I have a few patients waiting for the outpatient clinic. I say hello to everybody. I hope to see you soon. And if you organize something in Pakistan, I'm coming. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maurizio, yeah, thank for you. giving us your precious time. Thank you, thank you so much. Take care. Oh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you, Professor, and all the participants for uh, such a nice uh, lecture on TSF. And we can always use these studs and rings. You need to uh, have new shell screws and wires. But that's all what is doing. But the program is quite uh, costly. And uh, once we have bought the pro ingress for one patient, uh, Katani was told that he was reusing for. Uh, he mentioned it also. Actually, uh, actually, sir, uh, the, the program. The good thing with the program is that uh, if you give your access to someone, he can also use it. You can't, you don't need to uh, use the access on one say one device. So we also have an access which was given given to us by a very good friend of ours in UK. So the good thing about the program well, is you can read if you know some as well, well, always. Yes. yes, but Ani also told us that he has just one. Uh, once in this, and he is using it on different uh, patients uh, in residual deformity correction mode. Definitely. Uh, sir, uh, sir, is back, sir. Just uh, the Dr. Katani just uh, ended his talk, and uh, yeah. after a brief, brief uh, question and answer session, he, uh, he had to go. So uh, it was a very nice, informative event. It was an introduction to Taylor's special frame. And uh, it, it, 
at least uh, my party did help us uh, help me a lot uh, understanding some of the things which as which i was having uh, trouble with and uh, inshallah this will be this is the first webinar but we will keep on doing such events this is actually a, a magic of elizar of uh, the gurki way it is a series of webinars and this was the second one and inshallah uh, in about a month's time we'll hold another one from now onwards we will uh, be hosting events uh, topic based one would be on elizar of hip reconstruction another one would be for basic non unions and uh, and so on one session would be on medial fibular transport and uh, we will keep on uh, doing these webinars and at least uh, twice a month or once a month uh, okay. thank you all for uh, attending this event thank you sir thank you sir 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 wants to thank you sir abhi can i have please ye sure sir mashallah gurge aaye hain mashallah main sirf ye request karna chahta hu ki hamare mulk mein हो रहा है सबसे ज्यादा टिबियन इंजरी है और उसकी सबसे बड़ी वजह यह है नाइनटी फाइव परसेंट डिपार्टमेंट में रिजर्व ऑफ का पता ही नहीं है तो मैं अपनी आसामी वालों से हारून इनसे और जमीर भी इधर है मैं रिक्वेस्ट ये करूंगा कि किसी तरह हम ये अपने ऑर्थोपीडिक करिकुल का हिस्सा बनाए नॉट जस्ट ऑन पेपर ये लोग भेजे आप लोगों के पास लोग आप यकीन करो रोज हम देखते हैं इतना बुरा हाल किया होता है टिबिया के फैक्ट्रीज का हम लोग ज्वाइंट रिप्लेसमेंट्स की तो फेलोशिप्स करवा रहे हैं साल साल की करवा रहे हैं और फिर लोगों को जब वो करके चले जाते हैं उनको ज्वाइंट रिप्लेसमेंट करने भी नहीं देते तो मेरा आप सबसे रिक्वेस्ट था कि आसानी शुड बिकम और ये रिजन ऑफ कंपल्सरी Yes, sir, we are working on it. और इंशाला जल्दी देखेंगे प्रोग्रेस के अंदर हमारे इधर रिश्ते में तो दोनों यूनिवर्सिटी डिपेंडेंट है Uh, instead of uh, corona we are going to observe all the precautions and social distancing with limited number of people but uh, as we have us subah wo allah se dua pad ke bismillah allazi wa masmi shayin fil ard wa la fi samai wa huwa samiul alim hamare corona mein hazar cases ho gaye hain ab allah ke fazl se har qisam ke to ye band karna ko बिल्कुल अल्लाह से खैर मांग के बिल्कुल Two weeks Hello. time with our next session. Inshallah. Thank you, everyone, and Allah Hafiz. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Allah.